that the time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious, makes you so sick at heart, that you can't take part. You can't even passively take part. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop. And you've got to indicate to the people who run it, to the people who own it, that unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. Welcome one and all to the Daily Mayhem Report. It's Manic Monday, February the 20th, 2012. Good Lord. Uh, we'll go back in time. This time to 1962, John H. Glenn Jr., the oldest of seven astronauts selected by NASA for Project Mercury sp space flight training and later a U.S. Senator, became on this day in 1962 the first American to orbit Earth. Earth, doing so three times. Now, moving on to today, things going on in the economy. Dow saw slight gains, NASDAQ lost a little, S&P gained uh, a little bit, but not enough to mention. And then other stuff going on with the economy. This first from the BBC, about the Eurozone ministers hold lengthy talks on Greek bailout, Eurozone finance Ministers are holding late-night talks to try to secure a vital second bailout for Greece. So they're still trying to hash out Greece. Everything's a mess. Nobody knows anything. Plenty of headlines, plenty of opinions, no facts, no results. Now this, oil price hits eight-month high again from BBC. The price of the oil has reached uh, its highest level since June last year due to the rising ten tensions over Iran's nuclear program. Some schools have thought think we should be more concerned with our nuclear program here in the States. But anyhow, moving on, one more thing uh, from the economy. And this, I was horrified to find this in an alternative news source. And it was from Yahoo News, which I get alerts from, uh, originated with routers. And I didn't see it. This was from the 17th. And uh, this is unacceptable. I needed to see this on the 17th. I don't know why this was kept from my inbox, but anyway. Treasury dips into pension funds to avoid debt. Excuse me. The Treasury on Tuesday started dipping into federal pension funds in order to give the Obama administration more credit to pay government bills. The unable to invest fully, the Federal Employees Retirement System Fund, beginning Tuesday, Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner said in the letter to the... Okay, I'm not... This is ridiculous. More money gone. Uh, we heard last week uh, tax returns will go out behind schedule already. It's just the beginning of the season. Good Lord, wait till the end of it. There will be no end to it. It'll never end. Some will go unpaid. That's my prediction. Ah, what else have we got here? Okay, that's all the economic stuff, but next up, uh, one of my favorite categories. Under the heading of Obama bullshit, today we go to the Twitter account the Barack Obama 2012 campaign staff, the official now, okay? This is authorized by him. We scroll down through, and we pull this off for the 17th, actually. And we, and we start to wonder if uh, maybe Mr. Obama's getting paid to tweet. This quote, GM announced record profits, another milestone for a rebounding manufacturing sector. Now, some schools of thought think that that translate to more corporate record profits, and let, yet the little man still going farther in debt. Promotion of a corporate entity on a profile that has over 12 million followers, over 12 and a half million, 12 million 624, 893 at this moment to be exact. Now, a guy like me with 60 or 70,000 followers can get paid $2 for one tweet. Imagine what could be generated if you had an account with over 12 million followers. Just saying. I don't know. Is he? 
Could be. Could be. Okay, now, modern day martial law. This outstanding list, 85 things that might get you a DHS terrorist watch list. We'll just scan through here. First one, using Google Maps to find your way around a strange city. Good Lord. Or to view, using Google Maps to view photos of sports stadiums. Skip down here. That's the first couple. We'll go to number 20 just randomly. Enter a construction site after work hours. Good Lord, you carpenters that forget your hammer and saw on the site and you're fixing your own porch on the weekend, so you go back to the site. You're on the list. Don't work weekends. I guess that's the, uh, that's the message there. We'll jump ahead. Number 30, randomly. Rewire cell phone's ringer or backlight. Good Lord. If you even act impatient, number 33, if you ever, anywhere, oh, good Lord, act impatient. I'm impatient reading this 85 things that make you a terrorist, possibly, potentially. And so that means under NDAA, you could be whisked away, right? Uh, fly while appearing to be Muslim on September 11th of any year is number 85. Good Lord. You can find this at lourockwell.com. This, uh, lourockwell.com again. And uh, this is a disgusting list of facts by Robert Wenzel. Uh, from the Economic Policy Journal, and I don't doubt any one of them a bit. It's horrifying. Martial law, without calling it martial law. Now, moving on, news about our warring world. First up, uh, the Extinction Protocol. Rumors of war North Korea threatens to attack South Korea if it proceeds with live military exercise. North Korea's military warned Sunday that it will retaliate if an upcoming South Korean firing drill violates the North's territorial waters. A notice carried by the North official Korean Central News Agency warned residents of five islands near the disputed border in the Yellow Sea to evacuate before 9 a.m. Monday morning. An announcer on a radio broadcast from Twang Gwang said there will be an immediate and merciless counterattack if even a single column of water is monitored in North Korean waters during the drill. South Korea regularly conducts artillery exercises from frontline islands near the disputed border of the west coast of Korean Peninsula. Such a drill triggered a North Korean artillery bombardment in November of 2010 that killed four South Koreans on the island of Yang Pyong, see all semi-official Yonhap news agency cited an unnamed official at the Joint Chiefs of Staff as saying South Korea and the United States and the United States will proceed with a live fire anti-submarine drill Monday despite the warning. Analysts and U.S. military officers contacted VOA. Okay, this is ridiculous. What, what, what are we doing? Shelling anything anywhere, first of all. Got everybody's focus over there, Syria and Iran, and of course that's heavy duty. But now we're also going to be just practicing? With, with, uh, excuse me? Good Lord. It, it, it's ridiculous. More news about our warring world. This, and I wouldn't have even used this, but Fox News got it somewhere because it's a hot headline. It's about the only truth they give you is three sentences so it doesn't go beyond that. NATO says three international service members have been killed during an operation in West, Western Afghanistan. The International Military Coalition did not provide details of the incident or the nationalities of the dead. Afghan officials said Monday the incident happened in Herat province where Italian troops are based. Okay, more people get killed. NATO letting us know. It's probably much more than that. That's just all you're allowed to know. Ah, okay, moving on. All this stuff, right? And you wonder why, from this headline, the planet is in revolt? Well, Washington got a little taste of that, although most of the media wouldn't cover it. 
But veterans for Ron Paul, White House march draws hundreds of troops, outstanding. CNN won't tell you this, probably not. Maybe they did. I don't know. Who's to say? I don't watch. Hundreds of troops gathered as veterans for Ron Paul White House march got underway Monday afternoon in Washington, D.C., time to coincide with President's Day. The long-planned rally is a fully permitted and approved opportunity for veterans, active duty members. Uh, okay, that was before they put that out, so no results on it, but they did march today. The mainstream media isn't covering it, most of them. This is found in ibtimes.com. You can go there and read the full article. Uh, we'll keep you updated tomorrow to let you know how that turned out. There were some live streams put up of the event, but of course, uh, they don't want you to know this. They didn't want you to be there. Now, moving on. News about our contorting Earth. More massive volcanoes uh, at Japan's Saka Rajima volcano. That's been spitting out and spewing all over the place ever since uh, the disaster at Fukushima. This headline is from the Extinction Protocol. Always good stuff. Always good stuff from them. Uh, and this, more volcano news. Aleutian Islands, Kanaga Volcano awakens first eruption in 17 years. The remote Kanaga uh, strata volcano in the Aleutian Islands might have begun erupting. The Alaska Volcano Observatory reports a possible ash cloud about 39 kilometers northeast of the volcano, likely from weak explosive activity, was detected on satellite imagery, and volcanic tremor was detected under the volcano. Uh, on February 18th, followed by numerous small events for about an hour at Kanaga Volcano. AVO has placed the volcano at aviation color code yellow. This new unrest indicates a possibility for sudden explosions of ash to occur at any time, and ash clouds exceeding 20,000 feet above sea level may develop. If a large explosive ash producing event occurs, the local seismic network, satellite ash alarms, infrasound and volcanic lightning will alert AVO to the new activity. So, yep, more volcanoes coming alive all the time. Earth is twisting and contorting. And this, oh, this is great. In the Philippines, you might have heard about the sinkhole over there. Well, it's not just a sinkhole. It's an expanding sinkhole, likely linked to 6.9 earthquake. Uh, they're warning people to stay away. Uh, it's on a farm in Dumming Jug Town because the soil may cave in at any time. Geologist Maria Elano Lupo gave this warning yesterday as curious onlookers gathered at the site in Barangay Camboang. Uh, there's no way of knowing how big it will grow or when it will stop. Outstanding. The earth is opening up, twisting, contorting. Oh, no, Kevin. Everything is fine. Everything is not fine. Now, moving on, weather, wicked and wild. First up, extinction protocol, Chile, Atacama Desert, driest place on Earth, pounded by days of heavy rain. Okay, so this uh, four days of heavy rain in Chile's Atacama Desert has forced hundreds from their homes as swollen rivers broke their banks and loosened soil, gave way to a second landslide in less than a week. Settlements in the world's driest desert remain on alert as... Uh, the usually slow-moving rivers furiously churn their way down the highland plateau to the Pacific Ocean. Some local towns have seen as much as two meters of flooding, and some 800 residents have been forced from their home. Good Lord. The photos, if you could see those, which you can't from there, but just nasty torrent of water and mud. People running scared. Good Lord. Ah, more weather. Miami this time. It's always warm in Miami, but now it's hot. Miami experiences its hottest day in 24 years. That's right. It uh, didn't feel much like February this weekend, even for South Floridians. Sunday saw record-breaking high temperatures in Miami, 87 degrees, beating the record of 86 set in 1957 and tied 1988. Fort Lauderdale was also reached uh, 87, but did not break its long-held record of 89. The highs are unseasonably uh, unseasonable. Normal temperatures don't break 80 this time of year. Hey, 80 ain't bad. But Florida, you're probably contaminated with Corexit. So we don't want to really be there. Okay, now, this from the BBC. 
across the pond. Belgrade, boat sinks in Belgrade as thaw causes Danube ice chaos. A rapid thaw has brought chaos to the river Danube in the Serbian capital Belgrade where ice damaged boats, pontoons, and floating restaurants. The thick ice covered one of Europe's busiest waterways during the recent freeze, which was abnormal by the way, they neglect to tell you that, uh, but began to break up Sunday as temperatures rose. In Belgrade, boats clashed into each other, but there were no immediate reports of casualties. One boat owner said the ice had moved so fast, boats could not be saved. So that's great. Already hard hit. Now their boats are getting taken out. And again, uh, we were warned. Okay, moving along. News about our toxic world. Going over to NHK World, this first one, last nuclear reactor in western Japan has shut down. Now, that's not the last reactor in Japan. It's the last one in western Japan. Um, Kanzi Electric Power Company operator said it has completed the shutdown procedure for the number three reactor at the Takahama nuclear plant in Fuki, uh, or Fukui, I, however you say it, prefecture, <laughs> sorry, about 3.50 a.m. Tuesday. Now only two of Japan's 54 nuclear reactors are running, but those two in the central prefecture of Niigata and the northern prefecture of Hokkaido will be shut down in late April. Good Lord, get them shut down, because Japan is still shaking and quaking. More stuff from uh, NHK. This is horrifying. This is horrifying, and this is all uh, coming to the United States, too. It's raining down on you. It's in the snow. Babies have already died from it. 40% of resident uh, exposure tops annual limit. More than 40% of the people surveyed in three municipalities near the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant were exposed to radioactive levels above the annual safety limits in four months after the disaster. In just four months, they went above the yearly limit. How many years do they have left to live? Oh, it's okay, Kevin. Obama told us none of it would come here. Good Lord. Moving on. Viruses, plagues, and famines. That's the folder. Let's see what's in it. Uh, one thing this week. This should be uh, going around the UK. Again, stink, extinction protocol. Incurable virus killing thousands of lambs in the UK. New virus is causing lambs to be born with deformity so severe that they die within seconds. It is thought... Uh, Midges brought from Schmallenberg virus to Britain from continental Europe last summer. The fetuses of newly pregnant ewes bitten by the insects often fail to develop properly. At Mayfield Farm near Mildenville in Suffolk, 75 of the 1,700 lambs born so far this year were affected. Good Lord. Oh, yeah, everything is fine. That's natural. That's normal. Bullshit. Okay, and moving on here, last but not least, the ever lulzical hacker news. Didn't matter if it was the weekend. The hackers are always pulling something. Headlines today from the hacker news. Uh, Syrian spyware to target activists. CNN News reported about malicious programs used to target the Syrian opposition. It's a computer virus that spy on them, and according to a report in a Syrian opposition group and a former international aid worker, whose computer was infected. They steal the identities of opposition activists and impersonate them online chats. And then again, trust of other users passes out Trojan horse viruses, encourage people to open them. Good Lord, the hackers are running wild. More stuff now, hacker news. This is a uh, concern. All you uh, mobile phone users, better heads up, listen up. How hackers can track your mobile phone with a cheap setup. Well, evidently, uh, about 30 bucks worth of stuff, according to this report. They can uh, track everything your phone is doing. So, big heads up. Learn about that. Hackernews.com. Thehackernews.com. You, you should read that headline. Uh, it's not going to do me much good to read it to you. You're going to need to see what's going on there. In this, FBI will shut down the Internet on March 8th. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, not completely, but evidently because, uh, well, I'll just read it to you. How's that? 
The internet could go dark for millions of millions of users as early as March 8th because of a virus that has corrupted computers on more than one in more than 100 countries. Last year, authorities in Estonia apprehended six men believed responsible for creating a malicious computer script called the DNS Changer Trojan. Once set loose on the web, a worm corrupted computers in upwards of 100 countries, including an estimated 500,000 in America alone. Good Lord. The primary impact of this infection is that it caused web surfers to be sent to fraudulent websites by changing what is called the DNS settings on the compromised computers. The domain name system, or DNS, is the backbone of the Internet's address scheme, and DNS servers are special computers around the world that act as Internet traffic cops, providing directions to websites that you wish to visit. Though the FBI has shut down the DNS changer network and put up surrogate servers, they warn the solution is only temporary, and the court order deadline is March 8th when the FBI pinched the group. They, uh, if they had shut down the rogue DNS servers, everyone that was infected would have instantly been cut off from the Internet, so the FBI chose a different strategy. They decided to get a court order allowing them to replace the rogue DNS servers with legitimate stand-in so that all infected computers won't get cut off without warning to give them time to get the word out. Both Windows and Mac OS users are at risk for this infection because it exploits your browser, not your operating system. If you are somewhat technical, you can do a self-check on your computer to make sure you're not infected by comparing your computer's DNS settings to the list of rogue DNS servers. So if you want to know about that, go over to thehackernews.com and check out those um, that list, and you can check yourself. Good Lord, it's ridiculous, and you wonder why I call it mayhem. Well, it is mayhem. It's ridiculous. And that is the day. It's only Monday. Can you believe that?